Happiness can be found even in the darkest of times, if one only remembers to turn on the light. By the great theologian, Albus Dumbledore. Grab your coffee, let's talk about that. Hey guys, Jeff here from That Bold Life, your weekly encouragement to help you live a bold life for Jesus. Now you may notice my voice sounds a little bit worse for wear. I am a little bit under the weather, uh, so be praying for me, but that kind of plays in perfectly with today's video. Today we're going to be talking about how Christians should handle darkness. Darkness will come in every one of our lives, but how do we handle it? And first I want to tell you guys a story. For those of you new to the channel, you may not know, but I have a nearly two-year-old daughter. Um, her name is London Evans, and she is the pride and joy of my life. My wife and I just adore that little girl, and she can also be a brat. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, so last night I was actually, I was giving her a bath, and this girl loves baths. She loves to take a bath. She loves to be in the water. She'll splash and she'll play, and it is a struggle to get her out. Now last night she was in the bath, and she'd probably been in there, oh, 20 or 30 minutes, and I knew she wasn't gonna wanna get out because she was still playing and she was still having such a good time. So instead of just pulling her right out of the warm water that she enjoyed being in, I decided to hit the drain and just drain out all the water. And slowly over the course of you know two or three minutes, all the water drained out. And, and I seen her notice that the water was getting lower and lower and lower. And, and when all the water had kind of ran out, I expected her to get very mad because she's got a little temper. She will, she'll get up and she'll throw a straight fit, okay? I expected her to throw a fit. Instead, she stood up and she started splashing in the puddle that was left. All her water had drained out and she stood up and started stomping and splashing around and, and just having fun with this little puddle of water that was left in the bottom. So as Christians, when our water runs out, when that thing we want most, when that person we love most, when that happens to us and darkness comes over our lives, are we the Christian that throws a temper tantrum and turns back to the world, or are we gonna splash in the puddle we have left? Are we gonna enjoy, are we gonna take delight in what we have left? Are we gonna see the good in the bad, or are we only gonna focus on the bad? Because in every situation, in every part of our life, when darkness enters, there will always be light. There will always be somewhere good, something to turn to. So will we focus on the darkness and let the darkness consume us, or will we splash around in the puddle we have remaining? This thought immediately makes me think of Paul. And, and not just Paul, but actually the book of Philippians. Because when I read the book of Philippians, we call it the most joyous book in the Bible. And I'm sure we've all heard that. Because the whole book is about joy, 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 joy. Paul is in a great mood, yet Paul is actually in prison while writing this book. You would think he's on a cruise in the Bahamas or something as happy as he is, but instead he's in prison Clearly, in a dark place, in a desperate place, his water has drained out. He is consumed with darkness, yet Paul sees the light. It's while he's in prison, while he's writing this book of Philippians, in chapter 4, he writes these words. He says this, Rejoice in the Lord always, I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all, the Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, give thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Notice that Paul, while in prison, obviously consumed with darkness, he says these words, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, give thanksgiving. Present your requests to God. Obviously, Paul knows a little something about splashing around in the puddle you have left. Obviously, Paul has a good idea of what it means to be consumed with darkness, but seeing the light through the darkness. Actually, in, in chapter 4, he goes on to say these words, I know what it is to be in need. I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through Him who gives me strength. He knows what it's like to be in need. He knows what it's like to have plenty. He knows what it's like to want. 
He knows what it's like to be well-fed, knows what it's like to be hungry. He knows that in every situation, he can do all things through Christ who gives him strength. Notice that he himself can't just do all things, but he can do them through Christ who gives him strength. So I wanna leave you with this bit of encouragement. Whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through, whatever darkness has consumed your life, whatever area of life that is that is battling against you, that you have to focus on, that thing that you can't tear your eyes from, that thing that is eating you up on the inside, go to God. Trust the words of the Apostle Paul here where he says, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. You can do all things. Now maybe that doesn't mean you can fly and teleport or, you know, be a member of the Avengers, but but you can do all things through Christ, that in the midst of this darkness, you can see the light because Christ is the light and Christ is always working in your life. He's never left you, nor will he ever forsake you. He's always there right with you. So there's always light to be seen, even in the darkest moments. And God is that light. Go to God in every situation, in the darkest of situations, go to God in prayer and petition and give thanksgiving to him for all the good he has done. And he is good and he continues to do good. So never feel too lost because one of my favorite verses is Romans 8, 28. And it says this, we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. This verse says, notice what it says, that not all things will be good, but it says that God will use all things. So that's the good, the bad, the dark, the light. He will use all those things to work together for the good of those who love Him. So turn to God, love God, give it to God, and He in turn will work it together for your good. It may not be good, but God can use it for good. You see, there's never a miracle in the Bible that doesn't first start with a hopeless situation. There's never a testimony that doesn't first start with a test. You see, we're going to go through some things. We're going to face some things. We're going to face darkness that makes us question our faith, question our God, question the people around us, and question our life, our calling, and our purpose. We're going to go through those things. Don't lose sight of the light. Look to God. Look to Jesus. He is the light. Let Him get you through this situation. Remember, you can do all things if you simply put your faith, your trust, and your hope in Jesus Christ because He is the light in the darkness. Remember that this week whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through. Turn to the light. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and slap that subscribe button. I release videos just like this every single week. And if you did enjoy this video, won't you go and hit me a comment down below and let me know your favorite Bible verse. All right, guys, keep living that bold life.